Good morning. So happy to see all of you here this morning and worshiping with us on this Sunday morning, the day that our Lord rose from the dead. And one of my favorite Bible verses says, Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And I love that verse because it reminds us that we need to be in this moment, just simply to be in today and say, God, we just simply thank you for the gift of today. And so I thank you for being in church with us this morning um, and worshiping with us. If you happen to be new to our church, I know some new people that are visiting today. If you are new to our church, we do want you to know how excited we are that you're part of our church. Every Sunday, there are new people that are visiting our church. If you are new, please, please make it a point to introduce yourself either to myself or to our welcoming team. They're in the very far back of the church at the very end of liturgy, and they'll tell you about all the great things that we've got going on here in church. And to those of you that are tuning in live, watching our services online, we're so grateful that you've made St. the Divine a place where you worship at. And if you're downloading this podcast, again, we thank you for making this a place where you grow in your faith. And today, it's such a beautiful day, but it's a tragic day. It's a, what we call in the church world, in the Orthodox world, we call this joyful sorrow. That there's a joy in the day that is the day of the resurrection, but sorrow because many of you watched in horror yesterday when you woke up in the morning, the news of a member of our church family, a police officer, Officer Brad McNew, who was shot and killed trying to protect someone from domestic abuse. And I don't know how courageous this family is, but on this day, this family desi desired to be in this house. And on our fir here in our pews, we have Brad's wife, Edna, their son Liam, and the entire family, the McNew family that are here. And I know that as we worship today, that our hearts are heavy because we know that Brad was someone that was very much part of our church. And to see how quickly life can be taken away from someone who is simply trying to serve and to do his duty, to protect and to serve. And so to you, Edna, and to, to, and to El, Liam, um, how much we love you and that we are praying with you all and that we are, um, we're, we're praying today, not only the divine liturgy, but we're worshiping a God that you know very well in Christ who believed and who died on the cross so that Brad is now resting with Elizabeth, that he is in the kingdom of heaven and that there is no end to this story, that there's simply a new story that Brad is experiencing. And so my thoughts and my prayers and more importantly, all of Brad's church family, which are now your church family, are praying with you all um, and asking God to give you all comfort. <clears throat> I asked this morning, several weeks ago, to subdeacon Nassim Elias, who serves as our uh, vice president of our parish council to deliver this morning's homily. And I know that as you're hearing this homily, I know that he's going to be tying in some amazing things about Brad in his sermon. So I ask all of you to please give him your undivided attention. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me okay? The last time Father Nick asked me to deliver a sermon on stewardship, after that Sunday service, Brad came and found me at the office. And he gave me one of the warmest hugs. And he thanked me for the words that God put into my mouth to share with you on that day and what it meant to him in his walk of faith. And I hope today that I can honor his memory and share with you the words that God has put into my mouth to share with you today and hopefully inspire you and me, myself, in our walk of faith. Brad took on the, when he was chrismated, took on the name of Saint Cyril. Through the prayers of Saint Cyril. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. For the past several weeks, we've been talking about kenosis, a Greek word that refers to the emptying of oneself so that we can make room for Jesus in our life. We've learned from Father Nick and from Father Andrew about those areas of our life that we need to empty out, like that we really need to take out the garbage. Areas such as impatience, anger, immorality. And today I want to dive just a little bit deeper and I want to talk to you 
and put an exclamation point and give you the tools and how we as Orthodox Christians apply kenosis as it relates to stewardship and specifically as it relates to possessions. Did you know that the one subject that Jesus Christ spoke the most about outside of the kingdom of heaven, more than prayer and fasting combined, was money? You know, if we were to talk about money in this church as often as Christ talked about it, every third Sunday would be about that. Why is that? And that's because God knows that one of our biggest spiritual battles and His biggest competitor for our life is the love of money. As some of you might know, I'm a financial planner. And for financial advisors, for most of them, the focus of their practice is to help people with retirement planning. In our Western society, we bought into this idea that we're supposed to find something hard that we need to work at, just so that we can go out and buy a bunch of stuff and maybe save a little bit of money and then get to this date and time in our future we can retire and sail off into the sunset. But let me tell you, brothers and sisters, church family, there is nothing biblical about that. There's nothing Christian about that. Our God is continuously working, nonstop. In fact, when Jesus Christ was being harassed by the Jewish leaders in the synagogue because he healed a man on the Sabbath, you know what he said to them? He said, my father is always working and so am I. Church family, all of us here today, you and me, we are his body. We're called to be his hands, his feet on this earth, doing good work to grow in our discipleship so that we can do his work on this, on this earth. But the devil loves to distract us. He wants us to aim at the wrong target. He literally wants us to miss the heavenly mark. And see, the problem for most people, you know, only 13% of people who identify as Christians actually read the Bible. See, the problem for most of us is we don't even know the job description that was written for our life by the author of life. I'll give you another example financial advisors will typically ask when they're meeting with a client for the first time. They'll ask them, what's your number? Like, how much would you like to have? We all have some idea of a number, a fuzzy idea of one, but let me tell you, friends, could it be that we as Christians, that are followers of the one true God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, could it be that we should be asking ourselves a completely different question? Maybe we should be asking ourselves, how much is enough? Like, at what point do we ever stop seeking more money, more power, more influence? When do we seek more just for the sake of having more? So that maybe we could spend some time and connect with others. Like our dear friend Brad, help others. Or maybe, here's a novel idea, or maybe we can take some of our resources and apply them to doing God's work in this world. One of the biggest telltale signs of our society of how backward our priorities are is that uh, is the amount of credit card debt in this country. You know the United States of America, we're the most prosperous country on the planet, not just that. Since the time of the flood until now, there has never been this much wealth spread across so many people ever in documented human history. And yet for a lot of people, most people, they're up to their eyeballs in debt, struggling to pay their bills on time. How is that possible? Now, I'm not talking about people that something bad happens to them, they fall into hard luck and they got to crawl their way out. I'm not talking about that. Please know that. But let me tell you something. Open up the books of the book of Acts. The community, if somebody was going through a hard time, you know what the Christian brethren did? They didn't make them go through and pick up debt, they sold what they had to help them. And could it be that for most of us, for most of everyone else, that all this insatiable appetite to go out there and buy a bunch of stuff, this racking up of 
consumer debt, or what I would call a lack of godly stewardship, is a mere symptom or a sign of something a little bit deeper, something a little bit more sinister, a sin pattern that's so pervasive that it's just been normalized. We've accepted it. It's like we're blind to it. And it all points to one area. It points to the lack of material contentment. It points to greed. So much so that that gets in our ability to connect freely with others, to give generously to others, let alone, how about this? How about trusting that our faithful God will give us this day and every day our daily bread? You know, the Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs that the rich will rule it over the poor and the borrower is a slave to the lender. A slave. There's no freedom in that. Our God is the God of freedom. And yet so many of us, instead of being good stewards, we take the bait. We buy into the enemy's lie. And we find ourselves under societal or economic oppression. St. Paul warns about greed. Here's what he says. He says, you can be sure. Sure. Meaning confident. That no impure, immoral, or greedy person will inherit the kingdom of God. He links greed with immorality. I get that. Makes sense. You know, the American family unit has been under, under attack for decades. Decades. The two leading causes of divorce in this country, infidelity and finances. Thank God for repentance. We heard Father Nick just a couple minutes ago in his prayer while the choir was beautifully singing Ayos of Elos. We heard him say to God, you give wisdom and understanding to those who pray to you and to the sinner you've established the means of repentance. You haven't overlooked the sinner. Thank God for that. We see it everywhere. We see the voice of this world everywhere. The world wants to sensationalize and celebrate sexual immorality while at the same time it wants to encourage financial greed. Think of the TV shows and their titles, American Greed. Whereas our Lord Jesus Christ, the truth, the way, the life, he tells us, he commands us, a commandment that's not advice, he's not giving advice, he's giving a commandment and he says, Give generously and protect and guard your moral purity. You see, church family, God doesn't care how much money you're making. He absolutely cares about the life you are living and the difference that you're making. And I am convinced that we cannot grow in our discipleship to Him if we are not maturing and growing up in our stewardship. As Orthodox Christian, it's important that you know that stewardship is not just about money. Don't, no, don't, don't take that away from this sermon, not at all. In just a few moments from now, all of us are going to come up to receive the Holy Eucharist. So we're going to receive in us Jesus Christ. Stewardship is about everything that we do with Him. Stewardship is about what we do with our minds. Are we getting to know Him? Are we reading about Him? Are we growing, growing closer to Him? Are we communing with Him and inviting Him into our lives? Are we becoming more like Him? You can do that through the ministries of this church. The Men's Fellowship on Monday night, the Women's Bible Study Tuesday morning, Orthodoxy 101 Tuesday nights, Father Nick's Bible Study on Wednesdays. Are you showing up? Are you growing closer? Stewardship is what we do for others. Can we lend a helping hand? Can we put ourselves out there when we see somebody in need, not expecting anything back? You can do that through this church. We have our homeless bag ministry. 
We check on shut-ins. We have the share of the light ministry. The prayer shawls. Are you getting involved? Stewardship is what we do with our possessions. With the blessings that God has given us. Are we making choices to spend frivolously? Are we making choices to go into debt just to try to keep up with somebody else? Or are we being responsible with what God has given us? So that we can put that, those resources to work to make a difference in this world. This church does that. You could do it through this church. I'm going to tell you what the data shows, what the studies say. So the data shows that we are at record levels of consumption here in the United States of America. We are at record levels of debt accumulation here in the United States of America. And yet the average Christian gives less than 2% of their income to their church to do God's work. Where are our priorities? So today I want to give you some practical tools to help you grow in your stewardship and your discipleship to our good and loving God. And the first is I want you to check in. Like, check in with yourself. What are you doing? We're making that easy for you. Over the past couple weeks, everybody in the church, everyone on our mailing list has received this St. John the Divine Stewardship Brochure. I'm going to take just a quick minute. I know she doesn't want me to do this, but I have to. So my wife, Dana, takes, she's, she's an artist, the most amazing person. She can take all of the raw data that's inside of my head and make it beautiful and make something like this. And, you know, she works so hard for this church in ways most people don't know. And babe, I want you to know, your faith inspires me to be a better husband and a better Christian. But I want you to check in. On the back of this page, you'll see here on the back, there's a chart. We did all the math for you. The average Christian gives less than 2% of their income, and here we break it down into monthly income. Take a look at it. Father Nick tells us all the time, all the time, Christianity is all about intentionality. You can't know where you're going if you don't know where you're at, because you've got to figure out a way to get there. Take a look at where you're at. Be intentional. Where are you? Number two, I want to challenge all of us here to be first fruit givers. What does that mean? You know, the ancient Israelites and the early Christians, there wasn't a Publix on every corner. There weren't cell towers. Like when they went out to do something, it was them and God. It was them and God. Spend so much time to sow and plow the fields. And when that harvest came, the first place they went with their harvest was to the temple or to the church so that people could be fed. Become a first fruits giver. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you, it's life changing. You won't miss it, but you will be filled full with Him. God doesn't want your leftovers. He wants your heart. Show Him you love Him. Show Him you trust Him. How do you do that? We're all going to get paid this month. Someone's going to get paid. When you get paid, take a look at that. Take a look at this. We sent... Look, we have to be intentional. It's not just going to take care of itself. As a parish council, and as a stewardship committee, we're doing everything to give you all the tools to do your part. We sent out direct deposit forms. We sent out envelopes. There's QR codes. There's text to give. So many ways that you can make a conscious decision to take action. Number three, take the three pennies challenge. It's right there on the back. Now let me say this first. If you're already given 4%, thank you. Take it up a notch and get five. If you're given seven, thank you. Take it, on, take it up a notch and give eight. You won't miss it. Promise you. If you're already a full tither or a generous giver, thank you. You inspire us. Your testament of faith is moving. I'm going to ask you to do one more thing. I'm going to ask you that when you wake up in the morning and you say your morning prayers, or when you go to sleep at night and you say your evening prayers, 
when you've got your commemoration list of the people that you're praying for, I want you to put this church family on that list. And I want you to pray for us that we can have the same kind of faith that you have. That we can walk with God the same way that you're walking with Him. But if you're like most everybody else, who's given less than 2% back to God, take the three pennies challenge. That's it. For every dollar, give three pennies back. You keep 97 cents. There's plenty to go around. Just three cents for every dollar. We have to take the steps in growing in our faith. And if Christ talked about money, the second most subject, more than prayer or fasting, then we have to take it seriously. And then we have to do something about it. I leave you with this. I have three amazing children. I'm so proud of them and I love them dearly. Now, I won't say which one, I'll let them figure it out. It could be all three. But a while back in the midst of a busy schedule in between academics and, and uh, athletics, there was a, um, you know, supper was gonna be a little later in the afternoon and, and my child was a little hungry. And although we're in a little hurry, had a little bit of time to spare and being the generous dad that I am, I said, okay, great. Take it to Chick-fil-A. Now, you parents know just how magical Chick-fil-A is, right? You do. I think it's because Tim Tisopoulos was their COO and that they're closed on Sundays. That's a different story, but... Anyways, in my opinion, I think this company has figured out how to make the most delicious french fries in the history of french fries. Like, they've got the right amount of salt. The perfect blend between crispiness and tenderness. I mean, I'm getting hungry thinking about that now. On that day, I wasn't too particularly hungry, so we just kind of went through the Chick-fil-A drive-thru. Again, my child was hungry, and, and I didn't want to make them wait till later, and so they just wanted a sandwich, something to hold them over. And being the generous dad that I am, I was like, you know, I'm gonna get you a meal. And you know those meals, they come with a medium fry. But I'm like, I'm feeling pretty generous today, I'm gonna get you a large fry. So I told the lady, let's get a large fry. So we pull around the corner, I pay the price. Grab that bag, it's so nice and warm, I can smell it. I, hand it. I hand it to my bundle of blessings sitting in the back seat. They're happy, everyone's happy, we're off and driving. I'm looking up in the rear view mirror and I see them eating that sandwich. Let me tell you, they make it look so good. I'm starting to get hungry now. And so, like all of you would do, I asked them for a fry. <laughs> Y'all know how that went. <laughs> Those are my fries. <laughs> yeah. You know, the flood of like adrenaline and the thoughts that went through my brain in that moment of time, kind of like, wait a minute, you, you know, you, I didn't need to feed you. The supper would be here in a couple hours. Like, you, we didn't need to come here, let alone get your fries or upgrade to a large fry. I didn't need to do any of that. I thought to myself, I mean, geez, I'm bigger than you. I can just reach back there and grab it. <laughs> but it was in those moments, friends, that I also thought to myself, that could it be that that's how we treat our Heavenly Father? He takes care of us daily. He takes care of us daily. We're not in need of anything. Could we be treating Him that way? Take the first steps. Check in. See where you are at. Be a first fruits giver. It's going to be okay. It's a leap of faith for most people. Do it. Try it. You won't regret it. And then take the three penny challenge. If you need help getting there, we know it, we get it. You've got to crawl before you can walk, before you can run. A marathon. You've got to start someplace. Start there. Just start there. And see the difference that it makes in your life. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for downloading this message. I hope that in some small way, this sermon can inspire you motivate you and guide you in your walk of faith. I'm a firm believer, friends, in what I like to call practical Christianity. Basically trying my best to give you some steps and some tips that you can follow to apply this sermon in your everyday walk of faith. And so if you have found this sermon beneficial, do me a favor. Not only do I want you to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, where you get access to all of our sermons, but I also want you to share them with your family and your friends. Let's go out and make a difference in this world, and hopefully this sermon can be one way that we do just that. I also want you to stay in touch with us 
all throughout the week on our social media platforms. Friends, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook and Twitter, all under the headings of The Lows. And this past year, Roxanne and I started sending out these daily inspirational messages. And if you would like to receive those messages, go to our website at thelows.com forward slash subscribe. And all you have to do is simply put up your email address and every day at 7 a.m. you'll receive one of our daily words of encouragement. And finally, friends, if I can ever be of assistance to you, do me a favor. You can stay in touch with me by going and emailing me at fathernicholas at thelows.com. That's fathernicholas at thelows.com. Once again, everyone, thanks so much for downloading this message. God bless you and stay strong in your walk of faith.